Good morning, everybody. Hope you're doing well. So I made a post a few weeks ago about some tips on how to work with combat athletes and how to work with fighters. And I wanted to expand upon that a little bit because a lot of people ask me, hey, what are you gonna talk about? When are you gonna put this post out? And I was gonna put it in like a PowerPoint form, but I decided that I'm just gonna go ahead and, and talk about 10 different strategies that will allow you to do a much better job with your combat athletes. Um, working with combat athletes is a little bit different. Um, there are some things that you really have to pay attention, but overall guys, this is just smart strength and conditioning. This is a little bit of common sense, um, checking your boxes, not skipping steps, etc. cetera. So uh, number one, shadow a physical therapist. Guys, if you have time, go work with a local physical therapist. Um, I was lucky enough early on to be surrounded by physical therapists, athletic trainers, acupuncturists, chiropractors, etc. And I spent a lot of time with medical professionals. In addition to that, even after my first job, I was able to shadow a, a local physical therapist in Burlington by the name of Dr. Al Viznik. And this guy is a very, very bright physical therapist. And he allowed me to learn and actually go to his clinic and watch people get treated. So guys, if you're gonna work with combat athletes and you wanna be successful, you have to have a decent knowledge of rehab. I'm not saying that you need to be a physical therapist, but you should understand the basics of rehab because they're gonna get injured and oftentimes they're gonna go to physical therapy. And if you have the skill set to take them from physical therapy back into performance, you're gonna be that much more of a asset for your fighters. Number two, learn how to assess movement. Um, I'm an FMS guy. I use the FMS with all of my athletes and I use a bunch of breakouts, etc. If you're not an FMS guy or you don't like the system, that's fine, but it's allowed me to create a nice system in which I don't miss things. I, I follow the script, I don't miss anything. I try to check those boxes off. And I also, again, I do the breakouts. I'm looking at internal external hip rotation. I'm doing a Thomas test, a modified Thomas test. We're looking at total arc shoulder range of motion, et cetera. So if they're moving well, the chances of them performing well is greater. If they're not moving well, there's a deficit somewhere and you need to fix that if it's within your scope of practice. So have some sort of screening or evaluation system where you can get as much information on their movement health as possible. Number three, learn about shoulder health. Uh, when I was a young coach, I was lucky enough to have uh, an amazing mentor. His name is BJ Baker. BJ was the strength and conditioning coach for the Red Sox. So he worked with Pedro Martinez, Roger Clemens, Jose Canseco, all of these guys. And he taught me a ton about training pitchers and the throwing shoulder. So I, I was lucky enough to have a fantastic mentor early on where I could learn about the throwing shoulder. And then in addition to that, I followed the work of Eric Cressy, Mike Reinold. These guys are shoulder gurus. They know more about the throwing shoulder than pretty much anybody. I take a lot of their information and apply it to working with fighters because there's so many issues with their shoulders, right? Whether it's postural adaptations or overuse, etc., you need to learn how to train their shoulders in a way that will keep them healthy and that will keep them on the mats. So you've probably seen me say, train your fighters like a pitcher. That's exactly what I'm talking about. You should basically overbuild their shoulders. Number four, uh, learn how to assess energy systems. Guys, this is a big one. I've been down this rabbit hole for years and I'm still learning, but follow the people that have done it. Follow the works of, of Joel Jameson, Carmen Bott, Dan Baker, Andrew Reed, all of these individuals that have put out great information on energy systems. Um, Devin McConnell is another one. Learn how to assess each system and then start you know, putting the rubber to the road and, and applying these principles. You're gonna make mistakes, you're gonna goof up, you're gonna mess up, but that's okay. So learn how to assess and program energy systems. And listen, if you goof up or you mess up, don't worry about it. As long as they're not injured, don't worry about it, but learn, write a program, apply it, learn, etc. So understand that energy system development is significant, but it's gonna take a lot of time and it's gonna take a lot of trial and error. Um, study low back health. Guys, low back pain is awful and so many people have had to deal with it. I've had fighters that deal with it and uh, grappling, striking, wrestling, it's so unpredictable. So it's important that we do everything we can to preserve the low backs of our fighters 
and our athletes. Um, I myself have dealt with some stuff over the years and it's just not fun. So again, make sure that you program in a way that's going to spare their low back. And remember, check your ego at the door, right? I, I know a lot of people wanna do heavy back squats and heavy deadlifts, but if someone does have some pre-existing low back conditions, those may not be a smart choice right out of the gate. There are other ways to train athletes and get them incredibly strong without having to put the bar on their back or deadlift heavy, okay? So again, just be smart. I'm not anti-deadlifting, I'm not anti-back squatting. I'm just saying, make sure that you customize the program to the individual. Study the basics of nutrition. Guys, this is something that I'm really starting to dive into. Um, I ask my wife a lot of questions. She's a precision nutrition level one, level two certified coach, and she knows way more about nutrition than, than I do. So I'm starting to learn about this stuff. I'm not a, I'm not a dietitian, I'm not a, uh, a nutritionist, but again, understand the basics of fuel, macronutrients, et cetera, um, especially when clients are feeling like they're getting really tired, et cetera, because a lot of the times they'll go into a scenario and they'll say, man, I just felt tired. And you know that their cardio is on point, but oftentimes they're simply not getting enough rest or they're underfueled. So literally just dialing in how much to eat so you can perform at the highest level possible is super, super important. Um, Number seven, learn how to program while the athlete is in a calorie deficit. This is uh, different for everybody, but the last three to four weeks up to camp, uh, I'm sorry, the last three to four weeks prior to a fight or, or a, a tournament, we got to be smart because if those athletes are in a calorie deficit, they're probably going to be a little grumpy, they're going to be hungry, and you need to program accordingly. You can't do you know, all out glycolytic work when they're in a calorie deficit, right? So you need to be smart. You can't just murder them because they're already operating on, uh, you know, a quarter tank, or maybe even they're, they're walking around with that low fuel light on, right? So you need to understand how to program when they're hungry. It doesn't mean that you can't still make progress, but at the same time, you can't absolutely murder them. Um, number eight, understand that PRs in the gym don't matter. Guys, I'm going to tell you right now, PRs in the gym don't matter. I'm not saying we don't want to be strong. I'm not saying that we don't wanna lift heavy. I'm saying that chasing PRs for the sake of chasing PRs is not gonna do any good for those athletes, right? Now, if you, can, if you can show me that getting someone from a 350 pound deadlift to a 450 pound deadlift will make them win more fights, then we're having a very different conversation. But nine times out of 10, that's, that's not gonna happen. So we want them to get strong. We want them to get powerful, but do not chase PRs just for the sake of it, because what's going to happen if you go to, you know, try to hit a PR and they get injured? Now, who, who, whose fault is that? That's on you. So just be smart. Um, number nine, communicate with skill coaches. Guys, uh, this is something that I'm, I try to do more of, but I try to talk to all of the coaches of my athletes. We talk about what they need, uh, how they're their strength and conditioning is going to carry over to the mats or to the cage. And it's important that it, it, uh, that you develop a team in which you can openly communicate about how to work with these individuals because several sets of eyes are better than one. And I might be doing something that I'm missing, et cetera. So communicate with the skilled coaches. All right. Um, super important, especially as they get closer to a fight and maybe they're going to be sparring. If they're sparring on a Saturday morning, you're going to want to go fairly easy on that Friday, right? So again, you just have to understand that total volume and all of the other skills that these individuals are gonna be working on are super important and you can't destroy them. You can't just smash them because they need to get fit, right? If they, like I said, if they're sparring on a Saturday, we want them fresh on a Saturday. We don't want them going, I can't walk because my strength and conditioning coach did too much volume. And then lastly, guys, this one um, I'm very adamant about and people will argue over it, but in my opinion, if you want to understand what it's like to work with combat athletes, get on the mats. I've been training jujitsu for five years. I've competed. I'm a purple belt. Um, and I really understand. Well, I don't truly understand. I'm starting to understand really the wear and tear and the, the demands on the athletes. So it's important that you really understand what they're going through because I think it will allow you to understand the 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 in and outs of grappling right it, it i know it has for me and i've changed the way that i train so get on the mats um experience it i'm not saying you have to 
go out and compete. But I do think if you spent a little bit of time, whether it's wrestling, whether it's jujitsu, striking, Muay Thai, whatever, mm -hmm. do something. Get familiar with what it feels like. And that will probably give you some valuable insight on how to program for your combat athletes. So guys, um, again, my two cents. Happy Monday. Talk to you soon.